Hello, welcome to Monkey's Paper Blues, a craft corner. Today we are going to do something fun. We are going to look into six different watercolor techniques. And we are also going to make two cards today using one. This is going to be part one of the series. Now for watercoloring, you can use many different mediums. You could use markers, distress products are fantastic for it, or even just plain watercolors. So get some water ready and we're going to, have to do the first technique using some of my distress inks. I believe I am using Salty Ocean and Mermaid Lagoon. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wet my paper a little bit. Don't have to put a lot on this for this technique, but just enough. And I'm going to splotch some on my glass mat. And I'm just going to spread some. But I really do want to saturate this paper with as much blue as I can. So I'm going to actually pull out a bigger brush. I mean, really, with whatever brush you have is fine. You don't need special watercolor brushes for these techniques. These are a lot more freehand, so. So I really saturated this paper. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more of the salty ocean because I really want the blue to show. All right, so I feel like I got enough of that blue on there. So next we're gonna take some salt. I mean, you've probably all seen this salt method. It is really fun. You get a almost crystalline pattern to it. So now I'm gonna pull, I'll show you how to do this, let's just say with Arteza markers. And I wanted to show you different products because you may not have watercolors. You may not have the money to buy a professional watercolor. You may have some in stock, you may not. Um, but this is a way to use what you have to do watercolor techniques. And I know a lot of people have said that they're a little intimidated by watercolor. And I understand it can be sometimes a little scary because it's very freehand. And sometimes we, some people like a lot of control while others, well, we are just ready to go with it. So I want to start by just coloring little splotches in it. And I was doing that and I was just feeling that I just was not getting what I wanted. So I decided to just freehand it with the brush a little bit. And I'm feeling it's getting a little muddy, but I'm gonna add some more colors onto my glass mat. And that's the fun thing about a non-stick surface. Now, if you don't have a glass mat, a craft mat works. Also, even if you have like a saran wrap, just put it on a board. I mean, anything that is non-porous works great for these. Now, I felt like it was still getting a little muddy, so I'm going to come out with my more vibrant colors, and I'm doing the ink splotching method, where you just smoosh it into the ink. And this one I'm doing it a little less wet, because my paper is already saturated, and that way I get more of a graffiti kind of technique to it. No one says you have to put more water in there. Sometimes you can just do it dry, like I just did, and you get some really fun effects. Now I'm going to put a little bit more water, and I'm going to do some of that blue. And the next thing I'm going to take out is some saran wrap. Try to put a little bit more blue. And what the saran wrap is going to do, it is really fun, is it's going to give a crinkle effect. So the ink is going to pool in certain areas and pull off in others. And it's going to make a really fun crinkle design. As you can see, something very simple that we all have in our household. Same with the salt, something everybody has in their household. Now I'm going to show you now this next one with Distress Oxides. And I'm going to wet this down quite a bit. And I'm going to just put layers of this Distress Oxide on this watercolor paper. And for these techniques, I am using Canson. 90 pound watercolor paper, not very thick. Um, there are thicker ones, 140 pounds. So I'm gonna heat set the first layer, just cause I'm in a hurry. You can let it dry too, and then do another layer if you want, if you wanna do it without a heat gun. I just chose to do it so we can do this for speed. Now that I have both layers on there, I'm gonna take a paper towel and just some plain water. And what you're gonna do is a lifting technique. Now basically, you can dab it with that towel, and what it makes is some really fun areas where the watercolor is lifted off by the paper towel. 
Now, this is great for clouds. And you can splotch off the wet just to get it to speed up a little. But look at that. It almost looks like clouds, wispy clouds. Great way to make a scenery with clouds if you need to. So now I'm coming back with my Arteza pens again. And I'm going to put some more of this on my glass mat. Now I'm going to say I really love this glass mat for this reason. You can keep on putting it on there and it wipes right off. You can heat set on it, etc. All right, so for this one, I'm just splattering. We're doing some fun splattering techniques. I want to show you different ways you can make panels using water-based products. Sadly, I don't have any regular watercolors because I have enough of these other water-based products that I haven't purchased a set yet. But with these, you can make some fun designs with it. So we're just going to splash. I'm using three different types of brush. I have my wide brush, a regular watercolor brush, a smaller wide brush, actually a four, and then I'm also using a thick brown bristle brush just to get some different kinds of color splatters and different size splatters onto this panel. Like I was saying, these glass masks are great. And the one I have is by We Are Memory Keepers. It's really inexpensive because I know some of them are super, super expensive. And I understand that's not on everybody's budget. I think I got mine at Michael's for like $16 or something like that. It's not bad. It's a smaller glass mat, but sometimes for card making, it's the perfect size because you really don't need a huge glass mat to create a card. Isn't that beautiful? Look at those splatters. So for this panel, I am going to do what they call wet on wet. So I'm going to fully saturate this paper. Now, sometimes this works better when you have it laying down flat on the surface. I did not tape it down. I should have because it's going to start rolling because it's wet. But you can even just pinpoint your watercolor Arteza brush, whatever brush you have. You can splatter colors on it. You can brush it on and it will spread. And what's happening is the water is doing the movement for you. Um, the more saturated the paper, the better. I've also seen this technique done also on a board where it is spritzed and you can let the watercolors just tip as you tip the board. And it makes a really fun, almost streaked effect. It's really fun. I'll put some links to a couple videos down below also so that you can see it, different techniques and different ways to do it. All right, let me put some more of that in there. Let me get my brush started. There we go. Sometimes they have a hard time if they've been wet to get started. I'm just going to re wet it. You're going to get a faint color with this. It's really fun. And it almost tie dyes the paper. It's really fun. I, I've seen this done with bigger brushes, and oh my gosh, it looks like tie dye. It really does. And it's fun because you let the water do the work for you. You don't have to be the one to move it, it moves it for you. As you see, it's looking more and more tie-dyed as it gets closer to it. So I'm going to put a little bit more blues and greens just to make it look a little bit brighter. And the markers I'm using are by Arteza. They will also be down in the links down below. Their markers are wonderful. They have a lot of beautiful art supplies from pencils to what you name it. All right, so I'm using this neat and tangled kit called Bloom. Now, what I wanted to do, there's two techniques. And let me just explain. I had to go through this. I did two panels for this because I wanted to show different two ways to lift ink and the differences between them. So I'm going over this with some worn lipstick Distress Oxide a couple times just to saturate this panel. Now, the whole idea with the alcohol is that you should be able to remove some of the ink, too. It takes a lot more working, I feel, than water, but you do get some fun effects with it too. 
And we all have usually have a little bit of rubbing alcohol or can easily access rubbing alcohol if we need to. So I'm just going to coat this pretty good so I get a nice color to it. I'm going to heat set it a couple times just to speed up the drying process. I wanted to stamp with my stamps with the alcohol, but for some reason it just did not work. So I also want to show you that you can use distress markers to watercolor with too. Now it's not just Arteza markers. Oops, that one's a little dry. We'll try another one. There we go. It's just not Arteza markers. Any water-based ink marker will work too. And you can brush it on just like a watercolor. I think maybe a wider brush would be better for what I'm doing. So let me get my wide brush out again. I'm just going to coat this paper. But the one bad thing I find about the distress markers is I need more of them. With the Arteza, I get a pretty vibrant pigment on my thing. I feel that because that's a felt marker, it doesn't get as vibrant. So I often have to reapply the ink onto there as it gets watered down. It's nothing against the markers. I love them, but it's just compared to the Arteza, the pigment is a lot less. So I'm going to show you one more time with the marker. Just putting it on a glass mat, you can do it. And then I'm going to bring out the same color in the distress pad because I think it'll be easier for me to saturate this panel than with this marker because this marker is just going to take forever for me to do it. So I'm going to get the picked raspberry, same color, in the distress marker. And you see how it stays saturated more because the pads are more juicy than the pen. The pen's got a felt tip. It, it's only going to give you so much ink where you can really smoosh that ink onto that glass mat and go for it with the pads. And you get more of a vibrant color versus the worn lipstick and more of a mellow color. Now, like I did with the other one, I'm going to heat set this. And like I said, I was going to stamp with it with that, but I decided we're just going to go after this with some water. Now, see, the alcohol is just not picking up. Now, if I use my brush and go to town with the rubbing alcohol, it really does pull it off, but you have to work it. It can't be. And I've actually seen this done where it's a little wet and it actually works a little faster. I don't know because I heat set it, if that made it a little slower. Um, but you get these fun little splotch designs. It pulls the ink off. It doesn't give you as much of a drastic, how can I say, drastic, you know, kind of lifting as water does. Water is like instantaneous. It just pulls it right off. I think it's because the alcohol dries faster, so it has less time to sit on the paper and pull up the ink. But you get almost like that alcohol ink kind of look to it. And I've seen it done with straws also making some fun designs. Now for this panel, I'm gonna show you how much fun just playing with water on a panel is. And it is, it's absolutely fun. And in this point, I'm gonna use the stamp again, but this time I'm gonna cover it with plain old water. And you're gonna see those designs coming out a little bit. Now I didn't get the full flower as much as I wanted to. They kind of got a little bit smudged a little. I think the water ran a little bit and they just didn't look like it completely. But they did make some interesting marks on the paper. So a great way to add some interesting dimension to your card. So I'm going to splotch us on this water so it dries a little faster. Alright, so here I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm just going to dry it with a cloth as I go through. Alright, just keep on going with this. 
And see, it's the same thing as with the clouds, except you're not using a paper towel to lift, you're using a stamp. But it's the same kind of process. It's wetting the paper to lift the watercolor off. And there's two different ways you get it. Now, let's recap what we made for things. So that first one was the salt. This is the saran wrap. There's the water lifting with a paper towel, the splatter method, the wet on wet, the alcohol on watercolor, and the water on watercolor. So I actually made about seven panels. All right, so let's make our first card. Now I'm going to be using that bloom kit from Neat and Tangled, and I am going to heat emboss this little bloom bouquet, I don't know, sash. I don't know what they call it, but it is beautiful. It has all these little artistic little gorgeous flowers on it. It's just really fun. So I'm going to heat emboss that in white on watercolor paper. And so I'm going to use the Snow Recollections embossing powder to cover it. And I'm going to heat set that to get that nice shiny white gloss. So let me get that out of the way. And now I'm going to flip it over, oops, flip it over and do the other side. Because I'm going to make two segments of this. And what we're going to do is we are going to freehand watercolor these. Now, the way I'm doing it is going to be a little less controlled. And I just want to show that you don't have to be perfect when you're doing this. I know sometimes with watercolor we feel like we're not in control. So we get a little bit worried about it being in control, but it doesn't always have to be in control. In fact, the most beautiful cards come when you lose control. So don't worry about staying in the lines. Don't worry about do it. Just have fun. So I'm going to use a water brush for this. This is another great way to use watercolors. Is taking a nice watercolor brush, whether it be a professional grade or mid grade, and just brushing it in. So I'm starting with the little roses that are in the stamp and then I'm going over the beautiful little large flower in the middle. And as you're seeing, I'm not staying within the lines. I'm like, whatever. I'm going around. The outline of the white will be there and that will be your lines. But have fun with it. Let go wild. Don't let lines be your guide all the time. Because honestly, the most fun is one you let go and let it just come through. So I'm just going crazy with whatever colors I want to add in. And I'm going over a little bit so that I don't have any white showing when I do the die cut. Because I do have the matching dies for this kit. Meat and Tangle is one of the few that I do also have the corresponding dies. Sometimes I don't get the dies with a kit. And I kind of wish I did, then I got a fussy cut. But this one I did get the corresponding dies for because I just thought it was so beautiful cut out. So I'm going to try to do a similar design on this flower as I did in the other one. Though sometimes it's hard to replicate something exactly. But I'm going to get as close as I can. Do some orange in there. Do that orange flower in the center. But sometimes working with a watercolor brush is the simplest way to apply watercolors. I mean, a water cup and that sometimes is, but sometimes if you don't want to have all the water cups on there and worrying about your water being clean, I mean, you just wipe off this tip with water on a cloth and you're done. It's not as, it's more better for travel. Um, I know a lot of people that use them for travel because it's easier to travel with than a cup of water. And you see I'm doing the same thing. I'm not worrying whether I'm in the lines. I'm just letting the lines not be my guide. And there we go. I'm going to make that a little darker in the middle. So I am now going to get my dye out. And I'm going to get my plates for my cuddle bug. 
Cricut just had a wonderful sale on their cuddle bug stuff and it was just it was fantastic. I think there was like twenty dollars off the cuddle bug mint. Good deal. Now I cut those two out. And now I'm taking that wonderful watercolor and salt panel that we created first. And now that I know it's all dry and everything, I'm going to put my sentiment in the middle. And I'm choosing You Are Beautiful Inside and Out that came in that bloom kit. And I'm also using the little squigglies that came with it too, just to give it a little bit of extra. So I'm making sure I cover this with my anti static tool just because. Well, there might be spots that are rough. There might be spots that are wet still that I didn't know about. Watercolor paper does hold water a lot longer than cardstock, so it dries a lot slower sometimes, and it's hard to know. And I'm going to put this in the same white snow recollections embossing powder as I did the little flowers. Now, I did notice part of my R and a little bit of my beautiful didn't stamp out completely, but since we are using a stamping tool, I can go back over with the embossing ink and do a second layer. There is no limit to the amount of layers of embossing powder you can put on there. I've seen people put three or four layers, five layers. I mean, it's whatever thickness you want. I mean, yes, they make ultra thick so that you can get that thickness, but if you don't, you can also do it with single regular embossing powder. Now I'm going to use these as a two little frame. Now I had someone ask me about the craft foam and whether or not I felt the adhesive worked good. You can use, like I had the red one, that's Tombow Extreme. It is extremely sticky and it works really good for on craft foam. Um, Multi-medium if you want to brush it on, but I really like my Elmer's. I just make sure I put a lot of it on. Especially with watercolor paper because I know that I am having a paper that might have buckled. But other than putting on a little extra, it sticks pretty well. It sticks a lot better with just plain cardstock, but even watercolor paper, it will stick. So I'm gonna smooth that out as much as I can. It will smooth out more as it sits. And I'm gonna take some of my Scotch squares and adhere to the back of the little flower flourish. And I'm going to make an upward frame and a lower frame that are raised on these foam squares just to give it a beautiful three dimensional look. But just think of how simple this was basic household salt, watercolor, which was the distress, uh, dis distress inks, some embossing powder, and some paper. And look, we got a beautiful card. Just and I'm keeping this simple. I'm not putting any embellishments on this. I'm leaving, letting the watercolor be the embellishment, the focal point. And look how pretty that is. Just very simple and clean, but yet also very simple and easy. I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. There we go. So look at that. Blank card. So for the second and last card we're going to have in this video, I am bringing out both panels and I decided to go with the water swatch. I really like that one. That one came out really pretty. And I'm just going to keep this one really simple too. Now I put a bunch of the little flowers and roses that came with the blue kit, bloom kit as well as the wonderful sentiment that came with it, which is bloom where you are planted. And I'm just going to put a little bit, it has tons of little flowers in this kit. It's really fun. And I'm going to put one layer on the half and I'm going to flip this over and do the bottom part. So I'm going to make sure I put lots of anti-static just in case there is any wetness. And I was going to do this in white and then I realized I have a lot of white splotches on there and I didn't want to take a chance of it not showing. So I'm going to actually use the silver sparkle one that came in the March kit for Hero Arts. It is beautiful. It has that platinum shine of the silver, but it has little glitz of sparkle in it. And I think it'll be a perfect contrast for these flowers and the sentiment. So I'm going to go over this with that. 
one time. And I'm going to heat set that. And then I'm going to flip my paper over because I already have this flower set up and it will go around the other end perfectly also. So what I'm going to do is take out the sentiment and just use the flowers for the bottom part. Sometimes doing it that way, doing half and then doing the other half is so much easier than trying to freehand it or move it around after the point. This just perfectly frames around both ways. So now I'm going to take some of that embossing powder and do a little bit more until we've covered it all up. Heat set that. I'm going to put that aside. Put my embossing powder with my coffee filter back in the container. And see how that shine? It's so pretty. So this one's a very simple card. We will end up dressing this one up with some embellishments, but I'm going to really layer this cardstock with as much adhesive as I can. Sadly, my roller is balking a little bit, so I have to work it a little bit, but it's coming now. I'll set that down. Sometimes my rollers balk no matter how much I do it. And since this is once again a watercolor panel that could be a little warped, I am adding extra adhesive. <clears throat> Make sure I'm going the right way. There we go. Now that could be it by itself, but like I said, we're gonna add some embellishments. So I am using my four millimeter Aurora Borealis pearls. Now the colors are the pink as well as the berry. And I'm gonna use my Zig two-way glue and I am going to dot little dots of goodies all over this. You may have noticed this is part one of this. I am going to do the other cards in part two. We've had a lot of people saying they felt the videos were long but a lot of you saying you didn't like it sped up. So the easiest solution to that is to do things in two parts which is okay then we can spend more time doing this stuff and we can revisit things after a period of time. Because we make things in batches, why not make this a little more fun? So we're gonna do this in two parts. So these first two cards are gonna be in this one and the other four will be in the next video. And also great news, the new Hero Arts kit for June is out and it is gorgeous. It is already sold out, so if you haven't got it, I'm so sorry. Hopefully you can find it somewhere if you still want it. It's a beautiful seashore set. And I can't wait for it to come in so we can make some cards. And that will actually be in a three-part series. So we get to spend three weeks on Hero Arts instead of just two. Which is even more fun. And there we go. Look at that. Isn't that pretty with the little pearls and silver? Very simple and clean, but yet very pretty. So I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please check out the last upload we had, as well as a video specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to subscribe to our channel, as well as check out our links of how to subscribe to our mailing list, so that you can get updates on sales, as well as newsletters.